Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 164. I'm your host, William Crosby. Joining me this week, the one, the only, Jake Terrio. Hello. And joining him this week, the many and passed around Ian Gibson. <laughs> Guys, today, today I did it. Oh, no. I finally understood and had a malt. An orgasm. No, that was yesterday. Uh, malt. Do you guys know what a malt is? M-A-L-T? Um, I mean, I've never had, but I know of the concept. Yeah, like a malted milkshake. Is that is that where we're, we're hitting? What? So that's where it confused me because I... Okay, look. Um, Maggie's part of the American Medical Industrial Complex which means that every week or every other week uh, pharmaceutical companies come in and buy out a Ruth's Chris Steakhouse or whatever and are just like, come on, everybody, we'll give you free dinner if you listen to us pitch our drug. Um, which means that on like those at the nights, end of The Fugitive. Exactly. Which means on those nights, I get daddy gets to eat whatever he wants. Right. <laughs> so tonight I was actually I figured this out yesterday, but I've just been waiting all day for it. I was like. Daddy's going to Culver's because Maggie doesn't like Culver's, but I like Culver's. Mm -hmm. uh, Will, did you like Culver's when I took you to Culver's? I, I did enjoy Culver's. I though I didn't have any of the ice ice cream, but I did have uh, those burgers were pretty good. Or no, no, they call it concrete. They're the people that call it concrete. I think is that Shake Shack. Jake has a question. Anyways, yes. No, sorry, it wasn't. A, I just wanted to interject when you began this story. I thought. What you were saying is that, like, you were Maggie's plus one at the fancy restaurants and you got to eat oh. fancy food. But what I'm realizing is you don't go to that and you eat junk food yes. instead. You slum it. Yeah, I get, about, <laughs> okay. I get about four hours to myself after work, which means fast food. And last week I watched a Western. So it's it's a great little time, right? It's my little bachelor fast night. Fast food, fast um, hands. So tonight it was all about Culver's and Halo. Uh, I'll skip the Halo part because we'll, we'll talk about that in a while. Um, but I did go to Culver's, which is basically like a Wisconsin based fast food burger chain. But they do like uh, yeah, they do. I guess, I guess you call them smash burgers a little bit. And they do cheese curds as their side, which are incredible. And they've got a whole bunch of options. But I also wanted a milkshake. And the confusion started when I looked at their menu and it said shakes and malts. And I was like, aren't they the same thing? Like, as I always thought malted milkshake was the same thing, but it's not. And apparently they're different. Um, so I, I, I then looked it up and I finally learned that malt is basically like a uh, it is uh, from Wikipedia, a cereal grain that has been made to germinate by soaking in water and then stopped from germinating. So it grain. gets. It, yes, it's it's so it's all about soaking. And so it gives it kind of a like a milky, like oh. grainy taste to it. And so a malt, at least at uh, Culver's, is basically just a milkshake, but with that malt milk powder in it. And um, have you guys ever had that a malt or malted milkshake? I generally find the texture of milkshakes to be disquieting. I'm sorry, I forgot, really? Jake. We're talking about food. Only grown-ups are allowed to talk about <laughs> oh, this. Yeah. I know you have childish food tastes. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, go eat your dinosaur nugs and your fry, French fries and ketchup. Um, I, I Malted milkshakes, I want to say, is a big thing in New England because everywhere did them growing up. And I didn't, I didn't like malt growing up, so I would always like uh, <clears throat> get it without the malt. And it was like always yeah. annoying because you'd always have to ask for that. Um, so, yes, I I had a lot of that growing up. Also, growing up, we called uh, milkshakes fraps, um, which I don't know why, but it caused a tragedy when uh, McDonald's started making fraps because when you asked for a frap, it was no longer a milkshake. But when I you think say... When you say we, are you talking about like your family or was it like a regional thing? I think they called I, it fraps. My family for sure. I don't know if that's also a regional thing, but growing up, like a milkshake was a frap, not a. Oh, so you're not just, a milk. Like milkshake wasn't a word we used. Uh, cause it wasn't okay. in our dictionary. That page was actually missing. 
the family dictionary <laughs> didn't have that page so you just put one in there and wrote yeah so on tuesdays on when we read it to grandma we would skip that page <laughs> Re milkshake C frap. That's why yeah. I can't okay, ca- gotcha. count past 380 because it was page 381. And so, you know, I just fear, well, fear of commitment. You just, you can't, yeah, I, you've told this story before. Yeah. You can count to 380 and then 385 onwards. It's 381 through 384 that you, right. that messes and you the, up because those were the missing pages. Exactly. Yeah. And the, the sheep, they don't jump as far. So it's hard. Yeah. To get that count in and it, it took you a while I, if i remember correctly it wasn't until high school that you could count by ones because when you were going through the book it was always by twos depending on which side of the the book you were looking at you know it was yeah, page 10 yeah. 12 14 yeah 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 45 a and then 80 b yeah i i i and then yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. roman numerals first and then okay <laughs> anyways yeah so i had a malt for the first time from culver's and um I don't think I liked it, folks. There was somebody on Reddit who said this, and I was like, that can't be it. Like, it can't be that bad, because why would people drink it? And they said, oh, it's it just tastes like musty cardboard. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's like if you put musty cardboard in a milkshake and it's and it's not. It's not good, but I'm glad I had it because now I know what a malt is. And every time I see it, I know n- never to never to order that again you know you guys ever have something like that where you it's always a mystery to you and you're always like dancing around and then one time you're finally just like i'm gonna do it and then you're like never again but at least i know now no i've not had that specific experience but hazel and i have had a lot of experiences over the past couple years of going like back to a restaurant that we liked yeah five six ten years ago and it's garbage now we had a dino nuggets yes (laughs) No, but we went yeah, to, we just, they're that. just, yeah. they're just a, a Shake Shack just opened up uh, near us and we went to it this weekend and it was terrible. Oh no. Oh. I love Shake Shack. You know, Shake Shack, their, their, their burgers are good and their fries are good, but it's hard for me to say any of it is great. It was way too expensive for the quality of food that we were given. Yeah. I've that only sounds eaten... like a bad Shake Shack though. I've only eaten I'm, at the actual Shake Shack. The service was bad. It was all bad. So, so I, I can chalk up maybe some of it to, to I mean, opening that's why weekend, it was good. But yeah, it was not good. No, I've, eaten, I've eaten at it a couple. I've never eaten at the original, so I, I can't speak to the quality of the original. But I've eaten at a couple other ones in there. They were good. I, it's one of those places where it's not as amazing as everybody says it is. Kind of like In-N-Out Burger. But it's much better than McDonald's, Burger King, and pretty much a majority of fast food. So it's like, wow, fast food that actually tastes good. What a fucking concept, you know? Yeah. That's like there's a pizza place I used to always eat at when I worked in New York City. And when we went to go see Boy in the Heron, I'm like, oh, let's stop at that pizza place and get a slice before the movie. And it was like the same pizza place, exactly the same. But it just looked like different, like the pizza. So the pizza people who work there now were just like yeah. from another pizzeria and were just like they bought them out and it was just like crappy oh. looking New York City pies from like the like not great places like they've been sitting out for a couple hours and I was like this is yeah. not this like I wonder if they got like chained yeah. out or something like that um, I was very disappointed but it was still New York, New York City pizza so it was at least halfway decent um, it's hard for me to judge restaurants by the appearance of the restaurant because of two things one was living in a third world country for four years in lebanon a lot of those restaurants did not look good but the food could always be fantastic you know and i got food poisoning multiple times at beirut because you know it's a street cart serving hot dogs and they've got a uh, a tube full of mayo sitting out in the sun all day but i'll tell you what they served some of the best fucking hot dogs i've ever had you know things like that um and also because of stubby's pizza uh, so Stubby's Pizza was this like side of the highway shitty pizza place near my parents' house in, in Maryland. And um, you would go in there and it literally. I don't know, man, like the whole place was covered in grease, but then the gr- the top layer of grease had dust stuck in it and um, you would order wings. And one time I went there to pick up an order and I saw them preparing the wings and they just had these really old nasty looking tupperware containers with labels on them that said like literally like (laughs) strawberry sauce and they took it out and they like dunked the wings in there and you got the pizza and it 
and the pizza would have like a quarter inch of grease on the top of it. But I tell you what, it's the best fucking pizza I've ever had. And um, just a short story. We finally found out why it was called Stubby's. And uh, it's because one day my parents were running around town and they came out and there was a guy with a flat tire uh, that was parked next to him. And my dad was like, oh, I'll help you fix the flat tire. So he, he fixes the flat tire and, and they get to talking and they realize he's the owner of Stubby's. And, and my dad's like, looks at him and the guy's in a wheelchair and he's missing a leg. And he's like, oh, I know now why it's called Stubbies because the guy who owns the place has a stub for like it was incredible. I think they eventually shut down. It was a literally a tragedy. I think when we found out, we got the whole family together just to order from Stubbies one last time. And it's a it's genuinely a fucking tragedy. That place and was the, amazing. The food inspector was trying to stop you from ordering, but you would just order anyway. He was, <laughs> he was so fucking disgusting Health in inspector. there, but it was amazing. It was so it sounds good. like um my dad's dad, we always called him Grandpa T. And then one day one not one day randomly, he had to he had respiratory issues, so we got one of his legs amputated, and then we called him Gramputee. <laughs> uh, That's really good. Where well, lungs but also, in your leg? <laughs> yeah well it's less blood to oxygenate <laughs> oh is that really why wait why i don't know it kind of makes sense why do they cut off your leg for respiratory issues yeah it's yeah. bad circulation oh is it really oh i genuinely mm. that's crazy oh so he had such bad wild. circulation that that the, the mm. leg was basically dead they might as well get rid of it oh that's that's great. I didn't realize that was a thing. Another thing to add to my greatest fears list. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> well, if you're not you're Breathe not a chronic more. smoker, are you, William? You didn't smoke <laughs> in the war <laughs> and then after chronic vapor. <laughs> I just constantly I bought these off eBay, uh, these World War One mustard gas canisters, and I've just been opening them <laughs> and breathing them in. That's not funny. My great grandfather oh, was sent man. home from the front because of mustard gas. I found from the trenches. Actually, from the trenches. Yeah. I found out that um, there was actually not the the so fatality ago. rate of mustard gas in World War Two. World War One was not actually that good, but it was more about injuring them enough to get them off the field and also like the psychological factor. Sounds but like the we've actual got a mustard like, gas denier in the chat. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I found out that the Flanders. Yeah, they had plenty yeah. of stuff to put the mustard on. Yeah. But, but it makes sense. It was like it was like purely psychological and you have to put the mask on and all that shit. I mean, not purely. Yeah, they were there was definitely enough to get you off the field. But yeah, it's not like, oh, shit, everybody that got gassed died immediately. The, yeah. the, the actual like, and those fatality bullets rate weren't was going slower. as fast. So they actually hurt less. No, they were slower. <laughs> yeah, they were slower. <laughs> and war horse. He's glue now. Think about that. They didn't Folks. shoot the horses. <laughs> the horses actually committed suicide because of the war. <laughs> the, horse, to... the horser of Clop. the war. Horror, horse. Or... My Sorry. hopes won't fit in the trigger guard. <laughs> <laughs> it's no man's land. Um, folks, oh. uh, we're here to not only oh, talk not about horses. horses and horse related uh things we're also here to talk about video games folks this week on what will has been playing final fantasy 7 remake boys ladies and gentlemen i physically hate this video game it is awful and i never want to play it again i'm probably going to finish it but just know in my heart of hearts i have finally cracked oh wait 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 can i tell you something i did not play this i played the first five hours of this game or whatever but the thing Three. that i universally hear from people that don't play that don't care a lot about final fantasy is they said the last 15 to 20 hours of remake and rebirth is just a whole bunch of fucking cutscene nonsense story bullshit so honestly maybe maybe you should stop instead of feeling obligated to sit through yeah. 15 cutscenes. i don't know maybe look it up to see if that's true my brother they say the last 15 hours it's the whole fucking game I there there are cutscenes <laughs> in between cutscenes. Like I understand Jesus your complaints Ian and humans' complaints, non-fun humans' complaints with the Uncharted games or Last of Us, where it's a movie. Let me do the thing. Or sometimes, or it's just a lot of cutscenes. This movie is like, or this game is just like, hey, 
you're gonna oh you're gonna cross this bridge what if we watched every single character cross this bridge what if when you get on the other side of the bridge you can move about 15 feet and then we're gonna play another cutscene where another bridge falls it's like why are you letting me play like just play the rest of the cutscene then like what what is going on here um and you know we were talking about this on the end of the fire emblem uh uh episode this week and Jason was like, why'd they turn an eight hour game portion of a game into like a 36 hour game? And honestly, I, during that episode, I was like, well, you know, they added lots of stuff and made it filled out and all that sort of stuff, added new areas and everything. But after that, I was thinking about it and it's like, why did they do that? There's a couple portions where they're just like, like the arm puzzles, like, let's just add a bunch of arm puzzles to get Aerith across this thing. Or I was yep. escaping through the sewers and in the original game, you fall into the sewers, you fight like two monsters and I think you're out of the sewers and through the train yard. And this time there's like this whole subplot with like, I have to power the different things in the sewers and like change the floodgates with the worst animated water I've ever seen ever in a video game. Um, and it was good looking water, but when it had to move, it was like thick molasses. And I'm like, what is going on here? Um, and then the train yard stuff, they added this like whole ghost subplot where you have to save the ghosts of children for some fucking reason. And, and, and I remind you, we go through the sewer where we're fighting giant rat monsters and the society of rats that no one seems to care about eco terrorists. Um, but we get to the point where Tifa and Aerith and Cloud are in the haunted train yard and are scared. And I'm just like, guys, you have beasts. You have people who have to guard the town every night from the like monsters. And there's monsters uh -huh. in the sewer and monsters are real. How are you scared of ghosts or anything? You should be constantly frightened of everything if you're this scared. It's just like, yeah. What the fuck is going? So, it's just this, like I, this. I this makes perfect sense to me. And there's one detail that there's one detail that validates all of your criticism and also explains why it's like that. Are you ready for what it is? Yeah, I'm ready for it. Have you heard of Tetsuya Nomura? No. He's the creator of Kingdom Hearts, and he's also the director of Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth. Oh, that's all Kingdom that's Hearts why. fucking bullshit is what it oh, is. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. And then, the, uh, spoilers, the plate falls onto the poor people. Like, who gives a shit? The poor. Get them out of there. <laughs> yeah. uh, at least the yeah. rich people on top died, too. Um, and it falls on everyone. And then it, the... Cutscene showing the characters, cutscene showing the evil Shinra guy looking at it smiling, cutscene of random cat dude I've never seen ever in my entire life who looks like a terrifying humanoid cat with a crown on going like suffering like it should be playing dark tragic emo music. I'm like, who is this man? You, you, this boy, this cat man boy. Like you've never shown this. It, was he? Was he red? Was it a red cat? No, it wasn't the the. Oh, the, no, I don't fucking third, know who that 13, is. It was it was like one of those Final Fantasy cats, Moogles or whatever. But oh, up yeah. until that entire point, I had never seen one of them, and you're just cutting to him like tragically being saddened by this plate falling, and you're just like, what the fuck is going on in this game? You should stop. You should stop playing this and just go yeah. back to the original because it doesn't have all this bullshit in it. It's just, and the game continues to be annoying all the time. I don't like the combat. It's stupid. I don't understand why they let you guard if it doesn't do anything. Why do they let you mm -hmm. roll and dodge if that doesn't do anything? Why do they let you Google the characters on Rule 34 and that doesn't do anything? Uh, it's just like really weird. Um, you know, I, I did. I was happy they had the dress scene. I complained last week that they cut um, Fox looking like a foxy hound uh, all dressed up like a woman. Um, and I wish it was Fox McCloud. No, Fox dresses up like a woman, and he is. You know, he can, oh, he can get it. Um, and I thought they cut that, but they kept it. But also, they take you up onto the stage, and they're like, "Hey, what if we put a dancing mini game in this video game? Wouldn't you love that? Wouldn't you just love that?" No. We got to see how well this guy can dance if he, we want to dress him up like a woman. And then Cloud proceeds to do a five-minute choreographed dance 
with someone on stage and I'm just like, how does he know this dance? Has he been practicing it? Did he know it was gonna happen? You can't just know intuitively a synchronized dance with someone. It was just like, you know, I'm complaining too much about a video game, but you know, all that Kingdom Hearts bullshit makes sense now. It's infected. But I think part of it is Final Fantasy the more The more people like and critically acclaim a game, the more you're allowed to shit on it when it's bad. True. Right? You gotta counteract also, it. Not not even close to a game like I'm back down on the seven train, baby. Not even close to like a game of the year. Like what do you what year did that come out? Twenty uh, twenty? It's all nostalgia. It's it's, it's nostalgia games. for Final Fantasy Seven. It's nostalgia for JRPGs. It's nostalgia for Final Fantasy. And then it's fucking Weeaboo, right? Yeah. So you put all that together, you're gonna get more than enough of the game industry to hop on your bandwagon. Yeah. Original still better. I I hold to that for sure still. Um, yeah, give I, me the remaster of the original. Do you see what I'm saying now? Like I don't want all the extra bullshit. Yeah. Just give me the original game, you know? I mean, I might keep playing it, you know, might as well. Uh because I did original? buy it yeah. in Rebirth. <laughs> so, might as well play through them eventually. Uh cuz you know what? It's that problem and you always make fun of me for this. I'm not quite Kyle where I'll play through Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm at that. It's with like Far Cry 5 and 6 I didn't finish. But like 4 and 5, it's just like they're good enough where it's just, it's taking up hours and I might yeah. as well be playing it until Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out. Um, however, I did pause on my Final Fantasy 7 remake train to play some Battlefront Classic. This is the classic collection that came out with Battlefront 1 and 2 from 0405 from Pandemic. Uh, is the name of the company. It was fun to see their logo again. Um, it's great. It's awesome. It's a fantastic collection of those games. They have uh, copied them to uh, 16.9, changed a bunch of stuff, updated the UI uh, a little bit. Uh, the game just runs natively on the Xbox like console now. Um, my only gripe, real gripe, is they messed up the loading screen, and it seems I like it's just a bug. Of that. It's Weird. wild because I thought I was crazy. I was like, what is it's happening? Not, there's there's no fucking way. It's a bug. They fucked because it's just it's just one audio. It's it's one audio clip that plays. So they fucked up the audio. Clip, yeah, it's, you know? it's the same noise. It, it looks so what it looked like to me, a trained video game developer, uh, is that they rebuilt the um, mm -hmm. loading screen because the original loading screen, I believe, pulled a a four by three chunk and this pulls a 16.9 now but i'd have to see them side by side so i wasn't sure if they had to rebuild it from the ground up and then they added the two sound effects in and then it just never something's not properly pitching them up or whatever um but also if you told me they didn't do any of that and they just fucked up i would also believe that um, i just mean i i think it's by my gut says it's by design. They they that was never in the requirements for them to pitch it up yeah. like the original. They're just like, oh, just play the noise, and they put the noise in there. Like it's good enough, you know. Yeah. It's not a, I, it's not working as designed. It's they did not design it properly. Right, and this whole thing reeks of good enough, which I, honestly is fine with me. Like they just trans transitions the game to whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, transition the game to the modern consoles. Yeah, um, I. Like people complaining about the servers and actual like glitch issues is bad. The server stuff in my mind makes sense. This is not some huge game that's coming out. It's a re-release. I bet not Aspire, but whoever like owns the publish, whoever published it is just like this is a checkbox on their business marketing thing, like on their budget. It's yeah. not some. But, but we gotta we gotta talk about how the problem was basically they launched with three servers. So that is three times 64 people that could play multiplayer on launch night. That's I understand not having enough servers, but three servers is way too low, especially when you have access to pre-order numbers and can do some sort of estimate. Yeah, that's why I just meant like it reeks of me of being like, oh, we're not allocating this developer more stuff for this. It's going to make its money back and that's going to be it. Like they don't expect it. I feel like they don't think about the like fandom behind it, you know? of everyone who's going to buy it and want to play it. Jake, question from the audience? Yes, I have not purchased it because I have been seeing kind of the mixed uh, reception to it, especially because both Battlefronts 1 and 2 are 
you, you can buy the old version or the backwards compatible versions for Xbox. Um, yeah, but, that was kind of my point is this is thirty five dollars. And from everything I've seen, wh- why would you fucking buy this and not either continue to play or buy the back compat versions? Uh, my quest. Oh, yes. Well, go. No, I'll, I'll d- double back to my question after Will's response. Will I was just going to say I, these versions are leaves and bounds better than those backwards compatible those backwards compatible ones are Xbox games running on the Xbox emulator. Uh, these are games that are, these new ones run at six sixty FPS. Or I mean, theoretically, I guess they run at one twenty thirty in multiplayer though. Um, well, yeah, but I don't play multiplayer, so I don't give. I don't give. I don't, give a, I don't yeah. care about the thing everyone has an issue with this game with because I don't know why you would ever play this game online because it is people playing a shooting game where you're just walking in open fields shooting at each other like there's yeah, no yeah. tactics there's no but i just any <laughs> like i do it so i never really played battlefield one and two until battlefront a year and a half ago when or no like two three years ago when we did a star wars stream and i was and we sat down and played them for a couple hours and i was like these feel great these look fine these are good enough and i look at this and i'm like this is not $35 worth of content here. It just doesn't feel like it, especially then the bugs, the glitches, the 30 FPS multiplayer, the server issues, etc. Yeah, I guess if I, I'd be more annoyed if I played multiplayer. Um, but yeah, I, I would buy this version every, every day over the other stuff. Like it, it looks so much better. It runs so much better. Jake, I will get to you, I promise. Uh, and uh, they've added all the stuff that was um, particular to one console to things. They changed the PC uh ui which was terrible to the console ui they added back in the xl modes and a bunch of other things so like to me that's worth it um plus the achievements are nice uh so it's cool uh jake what was your question yeah so my my questions were i've been seeing people say it's like 60 plus gigabytes because the textures are ai upscaled which i don't know if that's just hot rumors and gossip um but it does seem weird that like those base games were like like two gigabytes each, yeah. and then this is a monster. Um, I think like sixty gigabytes is bigger than like Hard Space Shipbreaker. Um, I think it's bigger than Two K Drive. I could be wrong, but it just seems crazy to me that it's so huge. Yeah, I don't know. I uninstalled one and two, and. One of them was five gigabytes or four gigabytes. So I assume they're around the same, but I don't, yeah, I don't know why it's 57 gigabytes. It's kind of wild that it is. Um, oh, are we, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why it is. Um, it could be the fact that they, uh, I mean, everything's, all the textures are sharp, but they're just like, creases are sharp like it's just sharp because you can f- you're not watching playing on a crt you know because everything's mm-hmm. 4k so if they did upscale yeah. to 4k i could see that but it's not like they upscaled it and you're like wow those textures look so good now it they look like xbox textures that have been up to 4k um, sure mm-hmm. but it, the game plays great it, it's f- it's super fun i i beat the two campaigns on the first game and did uh, uh did a run of galactic conquest and then i just switched over the second game because I want to start earning medals and upgrading troops and stuff. So uh, I've been, I started the campaign there, which uh, I forgot makes you do like a bunch of tutorial stuff, uh, which is super annoying. Uh, and then my only other like complaint is something's up with the uh, aiming in Battlefront 2. It like does this weird like slow down thing in the center. So like when you st- when you start getting moving, it like, it like starts going fast and then it'll slow down again when you're done looking. And I, I can't I'm tell seeing random speculation was... about uh, aim assist being too, like too messed up un- miscalibrated. Yeah, there's something like because I've always played with the aim assist in those games. It, it, it in one, at least it feels good. Like when it locks onto a guy yeah. and you're shooting them, I, it's hard to play on a controller without it. But the yeah, two's aim assist seems messed up. Uh, so I turned everything off, but it was still doing like this. It's like almost like there's a dead zone in the middle that it's just like not having a good time with. Um, but overall, if they can address some of the issues, I mean, especially the multiplayer stuff for those losers, uh, but fix like control issues and the loading screen. I'm happy. I, I'm happy. This is a version of the games. It's I, I would rather play it over the uh, 
over those backward compat plus the backward compat compatible versions don't work online. Um, oh, we don't play on, I, no, I'm saying for people who are complaining about the multiplayer and that they want to work. Oh yeah, yeah. but uh, and and I tested private matches. It seemed uh, now that you're saying that it did seem uh, maybe it, it must be sixty then is why I thought it looked a little bit different when I hosted a local game to test, or an online game to test it. Uh, but yeah, everything's running good. Battlefront Classic, I highly recommend it. I love those games. They're good, and I'm playing through them again. Oh, that's my speaking time. Who wants to go next? Let's go to Jake. Jake! Oh, yeah. So yeah, very briefly, been uh, I did the first couple missions in uh, Halo CE. I dove back into Halo CE to try to capture some footage for a video I'm working on in the background. Um, and um, I always forget that that first, the for the mission Halo, after you get out of the autumn and crash land on the ring, is like pretty open ended. Um, yeah, I always yeah. forget until I'm there and I'm like, oh, I can kind of just go around and do whatever That's, I want. That that was one of the most it, Halo is not just a good shooter, but when it hit, it was so it felt so evolutionary to be dropped mm-hmm. in this level. And you're like, what do you mean? It's not linear. What the fuck yeah. are you talking Where about? Where do I go? Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, that that game, it rocks. It rocks. It's real good. Um. But I um. I yeah, I did Halo and then I did. What's the one after it? Truth and Reconciliation, um, where yeah. you go into the, the uh, get into the Covenant ship. Um, so that's that's I played Halo. It's cool. Gonna keep playing it. Keep capturing footage. Um, and then and, um, I'm getting back into Islanders. That's my couch game. That game's still delicious. I want more. I want Islanders too. <laughs> Lego Islanders too. <sighs> William, Ooh, that's a good idea. That's William, a good idea. Yeah, it is. William, we've I'll be calling just my landed agent. on a million dollar idea. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Um, yeah, yeah I feel like email Grizzly Games contact line. Do they have one? <laughs> I was gonna say, Jake. Uh, I I'm terrible at thinking up my comfort games, but Battlefront is definitely one of those because I keep finding myself, mm-hmm. especially that it has quick resume. Uh, like loading it up Ooh, yeah. and I'm just in the middle of my galactic uh, campaign just as like load it up check it out hi campfire night oh we're I your sh- favorite cast group oh my goodness oh my goodness oh man oh my goodness oh uh, man I'm gonna cry I'm gonna... <sighs> not my makeup okay <clears throat> I only put a little bit of what's the what's the thing that makes your sweat not your sweat go away uh, a towel mascara <laughs> <laughs> no they brush on like actors and stuff I used to use that oh, just, pow- just powder this is like powder but what is it is it just like it's dead fish I don't know what it's Probably. made of I don't know what it's made of I just put it on my face it's cum uh, it is and... not I can, I can say that with certainty <laughs> can you say that with certainty yes yeah because I was a minor when I used it and that would be illegal is it what is it <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know if that is illegal, Jake. It's frowned upon, but yeah, I don't think it's illegal it. to hand uh, cum to a minor. <laughs> no, to sell it to a minor. Certainly. I don't think it's illegal to sell cum to a minor. I don't think there's a lot of laws around cum. <laughs> Next pixel eight. Can the title of this episode be selling cum to a minor? <laughs> we found a loophole. We found a loophole. That's a good that's a good title. Um, holy shit. Uh, okay. <laughs> we said we were going to be quick, and then you let me talk. Uh, We've only got one game left to talk about. That's true. Ian, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, so I, I only game I've been playing this week um, is Helldivers 2. Uh, I've kind of jumped back in. I was taking a little bit of a break, but I've been doing a match every, every day or every couple of days. Um, they've re- come out with a lot of patches. And it's kind of uh, between the changes, buffs and nerfs in the patches, as well as a lot of the community, you know, hitting level 50 and starting to basically max out their character in this game. It feels like there's a big discussion around balance and how to uh, rebalance a game. Have you guys been following this discourse around Helldivers mm-hmm. 2? Um, it's Jake, the same your, discourse that it? comes for any shooter. 
uh, any yeah. shooter at least because it's it feels a lot like I don't know. It feels a lot of like a lot of this discussion that has surrounded Destiny for so long, um, specific more specifically on like the PvP side of Destiny of people being like, oh well, now they've introduced this gun and now it's broken, so we have to do this and do that. Yeah. And I feel like that's the f- the fight that Destiny has been in for years is between the PVE and the PvP, that push and pull of the sandbox. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I've in the Helldivers discourse it's seeming like it's it's dancing between like you say like the max level the try hard folks who are like playing it to be serious and then folks who are like this game is just a a blast and i'm gonna play to have fun yeah um and that's certainly the camp that i am in exactly yeah Yeah. and it's funny you bring up pvp versus pve because it's exactly the distinction you talk about. Um, I th- I think the problem that this game has is that this game's about fun. Like every fucking design decision in this game is not about serious. It's about fun. You drop into the match with what? 16 to 20 respawns like they mm-hmm. expect you to die they have friendly fire on fucking everything your own <laughs> backpack guy will shoot you right your rounds will ricochet off armor they want it to be not serious they want it to be fun and yet the i think the mistake they made in this game well I'll, let me back up a little bit. part of it you're right is the tryhard community um they're always going to be fucking idiots they're always going to be trying to bin max and take this too seriously when that's not what this game is. This game is literally built to just be fun chaos all the time. Um, I think there are kind of two design decisions they made, though, that are encouraging the tryhard community. One is the number of difficulty levels they have, right? So I prefer playing on four, which I think is challenging. Mm-hmm. It's it's the right mix of chaos and some and some hairy moments where you feel like you're overrun, etc. And I could probably go up to five or six and still be enjoying the game. But I think levels seven, eight, and nine are tryhards only, right? And I think the fact that they have those difficulty levels in the game is encouraging these tryhards. And then the problem is the tryhards are bitching because you nerfed the railgun, which was our cheesy way to kill these high level enemies at at Mm -hmm. uh, at difficulty level nine, etc. So I think I think most of it's the tryhards fault. But I think part of it is also the studio where they have built a game that is centered around fun. But I think they're catering a bit too much to the tryhards. And it and it's starting to feel like maybe they don't really understand how to balance these different weapons. And it's, it's just a little discouraging. It feels like that's the first misstep from the developers of this game, other than, you know, just not expecting the huge amount of players and having server problems the first couple of weeks. I don't know. How do you guys feel about the recent balance patches? I mean, I've not. I I'm I don't know maybe I'm just an idiot but I feel like nine times out of ten when a game you know you read the patch notes and they're like oh yeah we changed you know your 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 the respawn rate of this by x percent we boosted the damage of this by x percent nine times out of ten I cannot notice the difference I'm just yeah. playing the game um, and that's how I felt when people were like oh the breaker is they they nerfed the breaker and i'm like i don't know it still feels fine <laughs> yeah. i'm still having fun um but it's mm-hmm. the same i think it's yeah it's definitely the same problem um that you're talking like it's that it's that high level stuff where i you know the post flies by on reddit where it's like if you're doing hell dive don't use this don't use that you have to use yeah, this. Yeah, you have exactly. to use that and it's the same problem that has plagued um Uh, like lfg groups for the raids in destiny for so long where they're like if you're not rolling with this heavy if you're not using this subclass with this whatever and these things we're gonna we're gonna kick you and like i'm just playing the game to have fun i'm gonna use i'm gonna use the guns i want to use i'm gonna play the way i want to play because it's fun it's a game i think it's video games and i you know i don't know that this is the right decision But literally, I was having some, you know, uh, game design thoughts to myself the day before they started pushing out these balance patches and everything. And I was like, you know, the railguns overused a lot. People are complaining the railguns too powerful and other game other guns are shitty. And I was like, I know they're going to come out with a balance patch at some point. And I was like, I trust them to make the right game design decision. What is the right game design decision? And in my head, I was like, I feel like the right game design decision is especially for a game like this, where it's all about chaotic fun. 
you never nerf anything. You never make anything less powerful. You just buff all the stuff around it. Mm -hmm. Right. So so it means don't nerf the breaker. Don't nerf the rail the rail gun. It means go to the shitty guns and make them much better. Make the flamethrower much better, which they did do. And and that makes it more fun because then people who like the railgun are still enjoying the railgun and they don't feel like they have to drop it. And then the balance patches come out and they nerf stuff and buff, buff stuff. And I'm like, I felt like they really should have just leaned into the fun and been like, no, it's OK. The railgun's fucking crazy. Maybe we'll just spawn more enemies and we'll buff mm -hmm. the other guns so they feel just as good as the railgun. And then at that point, it's not about the railgun is the only way to effectively kill these monsters. It's I like the railgun because I like a charging mechanic versus I like the machine gun because I like a full auto mechanic. It's all mm -hmm. about your feel preference and not what you're being forced into because of the balance of the game. Yeah. Um, but that being said, going into the second thing I want to talk about this game, which is um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Although not a lot of people are talking about it, but um, they added a mech to the game. They added a new season pass. They've had multiple fucking large scale events. They have new types of uh, of uh, missions going out. They're trying to fucking terminate or term aside an entire system worth of bugs like the 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 rate at which they are rolling out significantly changing content is astounding. Like, mm -hmm. holy fuck. How are they doing this when there are so many triple A studios that can't have a, a release rollout plan this good? It's crazy, right? Well, that was, I can't remember who published that initial article about their, their, you know, their game master guy, Joel. Um, yeah. yeah. And what I took away or what I inferred from how they were discussing you know the kind of oversight of the the evolving narrative of the game is that they had like a bunch of events just like waiting in the wings and yeah. they're ready to deploy them whenever they have to um perfect at which that i mean maybe maybe that's not it maybe they are just really fast iterators but that seems impossible um yeah. i'm sure they have at least for I would guess maybe like the first year of the game, they just have like a big list yeah. like that, that board with all the different monsters on it and cabin in the woods. They're like, all well, right, that, what's it going to be next? Where are we going? What is, are we doing? That shit, that shit's already in the game because basically the way it is in the game is they have unused assets. They have unused weapons. They have unused stratagems and equipment mm -hmm. in the game. And it turns out it's very easy to hack those into the game because basically you, you go to, you know, the 120 millimeter barrage and you hack the game file and you say, don't point at this type of stratagem, point at this unused stratagem code. And that's how people were dropping mechs early. APCs, all sorts of like NPCs in the game and stuff. And oh, so yeah, we saw those land vehicles that yeah. haven't been formally rolled out yet. So, yeah, you're right. It is the whiteboard, but it's it's beyond that. Like that shit's actually already in the game in partial in partial ways. And it's just a mm. matter of them, you know, flipping the switch and pushing out the polishing code to turn it on and that's that's insane because again this is a small studio with a game that they didn't think would hit this big and yet they have a fucking post-launch plan ready and rolling and there's so many other fucking studios that can't do that mm -hmm. well i mean it's i think when when developing fiction and i know like interactive fiction like video games is, is a bit different because it's it has to function on the two levels both mechanically and then narratively um, yeah, but always knowing where it's going to end is yeah. is better. Like that's that was like the whole kind of the the crazy thing about Babylon five. When J. Michael Straczynski pitched it, he's like, I have five seasons of story. If you give me this show, I'm going to give you five seasons. I'm not going to give you six. I'm going to give you five. I'm not going to give you four. It's it's five seasons. And I know where it starts and I know I know where it ends. Yeah. And um you know, that's where you run into the Star Wars sequels being like, well, okay, we, we greenlit the first one. Uh, and they end in a dumpster. Let's just make it up. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just make it up. Um, yeah. Or even like when John Favreau was like, yeah, I don't know when the Mandalorian's going to end. Like, you probably should. You probably yeah. should know so that you can develop a character arc for these people. Um, so yeah, I would, I'd be shocked if Avalanche, no, Arrowhead, Arrowhead Studios doesn't have at least a very loose outline yeah. of the story they'd like to tell. Um, yeah, because it's just yeah, wild to me that they're that they they're already have that 
they already have that content built and they're delivering it. That's the thing. It's one thing to put it up on a whiteboard, mm -hmm. but it's it's very hard to actually build it, test it and deliver it. Especially when you're focused so much on just launching the game to right. then have a bunch of content held back for week two, week three, week four. It's it's wild. It's cool shit. Uh, just to cut back, <clears throat> I did do a termicide mission. It was great. Uh, and that That's thing fun. that thing causes tremors. And then I was like, are these tremors going to like wake something up eventually? Um, possibly. But it also like sprays that shit everywhere and it smells good. Um, and also, I was going to say, when you're talking about patches, um, I was kind of on the same page as Jake, where like most games, when they patch stuff, like unless it's like a single player game that I care about and they're adding content, like I don't really pay attention to it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, with Battlefront uh, Classic Collection come out, I saw some Reddit post that was like, when are they going to institute balance changes uh, for the multiplayer? And I'm like, dude go fuck yourself <laughs> like this game yeah. these games are so figured out the, this this is this company's not going to sit around doing balance changes for your 20 year old yeah. game re-release like what are you talking about uh it's just so there's tryhards even in the battlefront community uh it's crazy to me um yeah hell divers 2 heck of a game i play like one mission a day and it's pretty fun just to make sure i get those major order medals and not miss out but gotta kill all the bugs and there's no flying bugs which is great i'm very happy about yeah that. i don't know what people are talking about um that they haven't added flying bugs um <laughs> it's great that they haven't done that uh moving on here to the news time ian uh where are you are you gonna start us off at the top Yes, that's right. Starting at the top, we've got a little bit of sad news, but it's a nice little nostalgic reminisce here. Akira Toriyami, Yoriya Toriyama, <laughs> the creator of... I've been drinking. Uh, let's, take that, let's, take, let's take that for one, everybody. A can little we get bit of sad news can we get, here. Jake, can you cry, please? Thank you. Action. I, um, I, I don't know how to say this, but we do have some uh, sad news from the past week. This actually broke right, right after the podcast last week, so we've... Had some time to think about it some more. Um, famed Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyami has unfortunately passed away at the age of 68. Condolences to his family. Can we hit that again? You, you said Toriyami. Uh, let's just do that again. No, I said Toriyama. <laughs> no, you I said, said Toriyami. Toriyami. No, you didn't. <laughs> let's roll that back. Let's roll it back. And I don't know. Okay, Jake, there's this Jake guy. The crying. There's this guy. This is guy. He likes drawing uh, big titty bitches and big muscle bros. His name's Akira Toriyama. And uh, he died. Okay, we can splice those together. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, Creator of Dragon Ball, unfortunately, has passed away. And uh, he also did some work on Dragon Quest series. Uh, there's another series he's known for. I think it's called, was it Flatlands or something? Or Outlands, which Sandland? I've always wanted to take a look at. Sandland, yeah. That, yeah, the that game and movie cool. comes out this year. Or came out um, last year. What, is, what does Dragon Ball mean to you, Will? Uh, it means 14 episodes of a show I need to get back to. <laughs> That's about it. Wow. Uh, Jake, um, I understand you used to watch Dragon Ball Z with your grandfather. <laughs> That's still basically my only direct contact Fucking with Dragon Ball. Shit. No, I told it, you guys this. I've called you. I, I hadn't seen it either. I barely watched it a little bit when I was a kid, but then I watched it for the yeah. first time like three, four years ago, and it fu it fucking rules. Y'all gotta know watch this. it immediately. Just I watch know Kai. This. I am Dragon aware of Kai. it. That's what um, you gotta watch. But um, yeah, my still, I, I, I can appreciate it as a a monolith of anime. Or just animation and art in general. And storytelling. A, a Incredible story. A cultural landmark that yes. few will ever be able to replicate. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I will say, uh, Ian, I did play Dragon Quest. Dra Kira Toriyama did all the Dragon Quest. So that's my Vietnam. Okay, good that's for you. my Dragon um, Ball Z. I will say... Dragon Ball Z, my experience with Dragon Ball Z was I remember watching maybe 20 episodes of it when I was a kid in like elementary school because I would come home and that was on the TV right afterwards. Right. And I'm like, I don't really know what's happening, but this looks really cool. 
and I, and I watched it for a bit. And then it wasn't until maybe five, six years ago that I started watching Dragon Ball Z Kai, which is kind of like a it's like a remastered version of Dragon Ball Z where they basically touched up the animation. They cut out a bunch of the filler and I think they went to 16 like by nine. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I don't know enough, but yeah, I would say, yeah, probably. Um, it's very it's very faithful to the original. It literally is just like a quality of life improvement, basically. It's like we're going to get rid of a bunch of the filler, <laughs> the stupid episodes that didn't need to be in there, and we're going to make it look better, but not actually like redo it. Um, and I remember just watching it and watching the first couple episodes and Maggie was in the room and she was doing something else. And then she got into the show within a couple episodes and then we started watching it and actually it was we started watching it shortly after we started dating because i remember we had our very first fight a couple months into the relationship and the fight was because we watched three episodes and then i was like okay i'm done i'm gonna go do something else and maggie's like no you're not we're gonna watch dragon ball z <laughs> some more and I, and I was like no i'm done i watched three episodes and she's like put it back on and it was like <laughs> it was like no i don't want to watch it anymore right now you know and she was so upset that we couldn't keep binging it that night um and then I it, that series just gets wild. It gets so good. There are genuine moments where I was in tears because of the incredible like character moments, um, like at the end of Cell, the final fight between oh. father and son. Why are you saying and this? Goku and Gohan? There's this moment that is just like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And it's it's just incredible. Um, so highly recommend uh, Dragon Ball Z if you guys haven't seen it. And even the new stuff. I, I watched that the first of the new movies in theaters, and it was a lot of fun watching that with a whole bunch of Dragon Ball Z nerds in a theater. So, um, yeah, you guys should totally watch it. It's fantastic. It's very good. Um, two things. Three things. Number one, uh, Campfire Night DQ8 is also Dragon Quest Dairy Queen 8. Dragon Quest 8 Journey of the Cursed King is also the one I played. Fantastic uh, Dragon Quest. Akira Toriyama designed all the characters. Uh, second thing is um, Karen does the same thing when I watch Star Trek. Uh, having with Star Trek and with Columbo is she's like, well, Columbo, she's like, you have to wait for me now. And then Star Trek, she's like, I mean, you can put it on. They're, they're pretty good. They're good episodes. <laughs> So, like, I'll put it on. She'll be like, wait, but what? Are, it's, sometimes she'll come home and she'll be like, whatever happened to that episode where Data lost his head? Like, what happened to that? Like, what was the end of that? It, like, ask me about it. And, but, and she's on, oh, like, yeah. the... the uh, I showed her. I'll be like, wait for it, wait for it. And when Will Riker swings his legs over a chair to sit down, it just looks so good. One leg, actually. Yeah. It's not both legs. It's great. That'd be crazy. Um, <laughs> and the third thing I completely forgot about, so we can just cruise on past it. Well, folks, let's get into the happy block. Um, I've got four quick news stories here. Uh, number one, Activision QA workers have decided to form the largest U.S. video game union yet. Uh, Naughty Dog Activision veterans have formed a AAA studio, Empty a Vessel. Uh, there are a bunch of uh, independent studios or independent game developers that are forming something called the Triple I Initiative, and they're teasing something. I don't know what it is. And finally, the Starbury CEO has been fired after the disaster that was payday three. Uh, this is the happy block because we have uh, workers finally standing up for themselves and management finally paying the cost of poor decisions. Question for you, gentlemen. Has the games industry turned the corner or is this false hope? I am not an educated enough economist to to accurately opine on that. Um, but my gut says we're probably due to see a fair amount more layoffs over the next year before things really kind of settle out and then yeah are able to be rebuilt. Um, but it is good to see these things happening. Yep. Yeah. Will, how do you feel? You hate it, right? You're the other side. Yeah, I hate <laughs> it. Um, I think, I mean, f I mean, these, these CEOs work to the bone uh, to buy their yachts. And I think they shouldn't just be kicked out over making a poor gaming decision. I think that entire team should be fired and sent to the gulag um to make mobile games yeah. <laughs> to build another yacht <laughs> no this is CEO. great news uh it's exciting the triple i initiative i believe the shadows of doubt developer was in on that as well which made yes. me excited um good for them fuck management and uh yeah we're turning that corner well not all not all management all management okay, i'm a good manager nope. i'm a good manager all management fuck them fuck guillotine um yeah, I agree with you guys. This is just a little ray of hope. I do think 
kind of had a second question here. It's going to be hard to answer, which was what does the post layoffs industry look like? And, you know, I, I think we're going to start to see a breakup and shake down of the industry where you're going to get a lot of these smaller, smaller devs, smaller games, smaller studios, smaller publishers, because they are going to rebuild from the ashes of all the people that have just been laid off. So as these bigger companies are slimming down ruthlessly, uh, the chaff are going to form together and start start forming their own little things. That's that's kind of what it feels like it's going to happen to me two, three, four years down the road. What do you guys think? I mean, we've already kind of seen um, like a shadow of that with um, in the game's journalism sphere with things yes. like Aftermath and because there's you know, a huge bunch of layoffs through, you know, thousand different games sites that have just shuttered or otherwise, you know, completely gutted their editorial departments that then you see people coming together to be like, okay, well let's do like a some privately funded thing or, or, or not crowd funded. Uh, I mean, kind of, is that what it, yeah, would we consider aftermath? Funded. Like a crowd funded, is that the exclusive source of their income? Is it like a Patreon? I don't know. I don't remember. I didn't look I don't know. phenomenally close into it. But um, well, not venture capitalist funded. We'll say that. Um, so yeah, I I mean I'd imagine we're gonna see just more and more kind of indie or triple I, like Ryan Stefanelli uh, called it back when Kyle and I shot that Airship Syndicate documentary. That was the first time I heard the phrase triple I. Um, but um, yeah, I just it it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if we'll ever see the end of the the monoliths like Microsoft and Sony. I think a lot would have to change for them to start cracking. But um, we'll see. Yeah. Will, any thoughts? Uh, well, you're the devil's advocate again. Yeah, my opponent <laughs> here would like you to believe that indie games are on, uh, on the, uh, the big companies are going to stay alive. I don't think so. I think we're going to gut those big companies. I think Microsoft stock... Uh, I'm going to hit my soundboard here. <laughs> going into the dirt. Uh, I just like, folks, indie is where it's at. Buy up all the indie stocks you can. Reddit IPO in a couple days. Let's get on that. Um, micro down with Microsoft, down with Apple, down with Activision Blizzard, uh, down with Epic. Uh, we're going to make indie Fortnite is going to be the next thing. Helldivers in virtual reality. Going to be incredible. Uh, hopefully no more layoffs. God help me. Fuck the managers, though. Fuck management. That's all I gotta say. Hey, excuse me. There are good managers, especially middle okay. managers. Fuck those guys. I don't even know what middle management means. Is that what I am? I th and if you're because in America, I, I think I am. But but that implies there's a lower manager, and I don't know what that means. The bottom you know manager. I mean? The bottom. So who's the bottom? Bottoms. Who's the bottom? Uh, okay, let's uh, let's move into the game block, folks. Two enormous game announcements this week. First up, it's finally happened. The RuneScape creator has unveiled their new MMO after 10 years of development. They said, quote, at times it has feel, felt like an insurmountably ambitious, uh, Akira Toriyami ambitious task. Uh, <laughs> you guys excited yummy. for this? Have you... <laughs> Let's go to the RuneScape expert on the group. Uh, Will, have you seen this? Brighter Shores? Yeah, I'm excited. I think it looks great. Um, I w watched a yeah. tiny little bit of it. Um, uh, Jake, uh, I think that's already been a spotlight, but you can double check on that. Has it? Oh, man. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. just wanted to include something. Uh, yeah, I was... Uh, anyways, um, I, I'm very excited for this RuneScape. It looks, it looks like another RuneScape, but better. Uh, it, it looks like a heck of a lot of fun. Um, I don't know much about the lineage of RuneScape, so when someone said this, I was like, is this like a tale of like, oh, I worked on the original RuneScape, but it is the person who, who made RuneScape. Um, and are, are they, they're no longer at... Uh, I guess not. I don't, I don't know. We should just save all these questions for the next time Chris is on. Yeah, that's true. It looks like fun, though. It looks like... If you took gave RuneScape a remake facelift, um, yeah, in a good way. So I'm excited. I'm very excited for it. I I want good things from this, but I'll I'll wait till it's out. I'm not gonna freak out about it now. You know. 
Yep. I'm also excited for the uh, multiplayer Spider-Man game that is coming out. Uh, it that, looks is like that f- official. I saw f- something leaked about it. Yeah, it's official. I'm looking at the trailer right now from Insomniac. It's a multiplayer Spider-Man game. Are you guys excited for this? Yeah, I'm very excited for it that they've released these two trailers for it. That's like crazy that they've done that. Yeah. I mean, they've got to go through with it now, right? Now that yeah. uh, that it's been announced. It, that's that's the thing. If you release a trailer, you have to go through with it. Yeah. That's why we're all playing insert game here yeah uh so let's let you behind the curtains uh this is insomniac's canceled spider-man multiplayer game Uh, i'm trying to remember how this this came out i believe it was in the insomniac leak from a couple months ago that they talked about how there was a spider-man multiplayer game and then there was uh i don't think there was an official announcement but there was an announcement from sony saying hey we're canceling some of our live service projects and then the rumor was one of those was the spider-man game now we've seen two trailers from it. Um, what do you think? Good decision or bad decision to to have canceled this game? It's basically Spider-Man, but multiplayer. I think. Um, I mean, it seems like with the popularity of Spider-Verse, it feels like this would have been a slam dunk. But um, I don't know. I can't I can't say what it because. To my mind, it would just be like a big co-op campaign or would there be spider PVP? I'm unsure I, I think, kind of what the I, end goal is. I think it would be. I think it would be. OK, I, I hate to say this because it sounds reductionist, but I think it would be it would be destiny, right? So you you go out in groups of up to four or five into the city and you can run people. around and do activities that pop up and you're just grinding loot gear <laughs> skills and whatever. Spider Stinny. Yeah. So oh, I, I don't know. Part weird. of me is like, uh, I, part of me is like, yeah, you're probably right. It's, it's a destiny. slam dunk because it's, it's got the IP, it's got all the players, etc. But I think the other part of it is, you know, why Naughty Dog said they canceled um, the Last of Us multiplayer game was they were like, we, in or, if, if this is successful, we have to have an entire studio worth of people to continuously develop and implement and support it. Um, and for, uh insomniac they probably didn't want to do that you know they probably realized hey we we really can't support this so we don't want to put out a half-assed effort Mm -hmm. but i'm also not sure that like i'm thinking about hell divers 2 right hell divers 2 small studio but they built an incredible game that is built for multiplayer it's built for shenanigans it works very well and they had a roadmap and they had stuff ready to roll out i don't think that multiplayer spider-man would be as much fun as hell divers too and and it would be 10 times as expensive because spider-man 2 was what i keep forgetting it's either 200 or 300 million dollars to make that game so it would have been stupid expensive because they're fucking idiots and it would have been not as much fun so maybe they did make the right decision I, i don't know will what do you think I mean, it'd be fun to swing around a city with some friends. Like, the most I'm thinking about it is playing Spider-Man, Marvel's Spider-Man 2, uh, just with some friends. <clears throat> and if it was like yeah. that, like, if it was, like, basically, like, Suicide Squad, but Spider-Man, uh, like, yeah. play with four different Spider-Men, and you can choose from a bunch of, like, all the universes, like, honestly, I would play that game. Um, but that's... Sure. But it... it it would have to be more than that, right? Because that is that's basically Spider-Man 2, but with a multiplayer mode. Yeah, Whereas that'd be fine with in that. order for them to justify this, this would have to be grinds. This would have to be level. Sure. This yeah. would have to be. It wouldn't be that. But yeah. if they were like, hey, we added a co-op mode to Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 and Miles Morales, I'd be like, yeah, sweet, dude. Fuck yeah. You know, honestly, that's that's probably a good point. Then maybe that's the that's the problem they made is they decided to make a separate game and that forced them to then add a whole bunch of shit that made the game worse when in reality they should have just said multiplayer spider-man 2 that's all like, we need to do i mean honestly at this point test it with the co-op mode and then make a full game if people like it enough you know Things yeah like that make, the, make the next make spider-man 3 with with drop in drop out co-op boom yeah done. boom we're done i mean it already had two spider-man you could have done that yeah so all two. right final block for t- it's final block time no more game talk it's just movie talk because we got three movie announcements this week. 
talk to me star Sophie Wilde to star in Watch Dogs movie. The first part of that, I don't I don't care. I don't understand. But the second part, they're making a Watch Dogs movie. Did you not see we Talk also, to Me? Uh, no. We also have a second Super Mario Brothers movie has been announced uh, coming out in 2026. Movie has hit the theater. <laughs> <laughs> hit the theater. And uh, this is kind of the weirdest one to me, but uh star wars rogue squadron is back in development with patty jenkins even though she she dropped it like two three years ago um we got three movie announcements rather than lucasfilm dropped it all all of them game related which one of these are you most excited for intellectually it's rogue squadron but that's it's like barely a notch above the other two (laughs) yeah i think you're right um Yeah. yeah rogue squadron makes me happy and i'm only bringing this up to mention that i distinctly i sat down the other day to look up all the rogue squadron games to see if i should play through them all again uh there's only i think that's four there's There's just the one on the n64 and then there's two two rogue squadron games there's three rogue squadron games but then there's like star wars jedi starfighter and naboo starfighter i meant to bring this up a while ago but i saw on twitter there's a developer making a dreamcast star wars rogue squadron game to run on the yeah. dreamcast and i think that's i cool. told you that i i played rogue squadron and vtol vr right like there's a big mod that is oh. like a full conversion mod Wait, so you still, you still because you never want to play the game you piece of shit no you stopped asking me first of all i've been sitting here in this stool all right naked tomorrow <laughs> waiting well i can't tomorrow, tomorrow. after work tomorrow oh, after fuck work you. i don't work yeah i'm playing at fuck noon you um yeah yeah so i think you're right jake Uh, my expectations for all these movies are pretty low um i think i'm excited just a bit more for rogue squadron because that feels like something that could potentially be good and it has an unknown element to it whereas super mario brothers i know is just going to be like a solid six like the first one was and Watch Dogs is probably not going to be good it's not going to be good i have a question your honor um high five um Okay, I'm confused. I thought they announced a new, a sequel to the Mario Brothers movie and a movie in the Super Mario Bros. world. No, I think they just said we have a new Super Mario Brothers movie. They did not explicitly say a sequel and they gave a release date of April 6th, 2026, I I think. I guess I was confused because I saw the movie news was in that clip you shared and then the mario world thing i saw in like a further press release so i I thought they were two different things so maybe they're not um i I think it's i think it's just that the way that they said it they were not saying we're making a sequel they're not saying we're making super mario brothers 2 they were just like we are making here quote from the nintendo i'm reading the tweet tweet. the first response is hi miyamoto how are you Um, so this is from the from the tweet quote we are now creating a new animated film built based on the world of super mario brothers and then and then the uh and the last line is we're thinking about broadening mario's world further and it will have a bright and fun story and then in the video they keep saying generic statements like that where they don't explicitly call it a sequel but they keep acting like it's a sequel so it's like it's it's a it's a it's a second Super Mario Brothers movie. We don't know if it's an exact sequel. If it's in the world. If if it's tangential, we don't know. But the way they keep saying things like broadening Mario's world further, it's it's probably galaxy, right? It's probably going to have some galaxy tinge to it. You know, maybe. I like what was the line you said? We're going to make it more fun. Bright. We're thinking about broadening bright. Mario's world further, and it'll have a bright and fun story. That just makes me want another line where they're like, bright and fun story. And this time, we'll, we won't include any nudity. And just everyone's like, what? Oh, if, what? <laughs> what if they who framed Roger Rabbit did the original movie, but they put Chris Pratt, his animated Mario, up next to Bob, yeah. Bob Hoskins Mario? I'd be okay with that. I'd That's be okay with that. Bob Hoskins, he's got experience. Because he was in New Frame Roger Rather Rabbit. Yeah, I think oh, he's you're dead. right. He did. Yeah. John Lang was almost not dead. Yeah. Right? He, well, he could he could make one called The Long Good Saturday with with Mario. And it's a sequel to both The Long Good Friday, which is a fucking incredible movie if you haven't seen it, and the Super Mario Brothers movie. We should do more of that. We should do more crossover sequels. Get mm. on that, Hollywood. Mm. They should make Commando 
uh, but yeah. it's Mario. And on that note, let's uh, end the podcast. Let's wrap it. Uh, I just want to. Yeah, yeah, we got Jake's stuff. So first of all, fuck you. Second of all, I wanted to mention because I learned this that Akira Toriyamu, Toriyum Yum. I like how you you deliberately said it wrong because halfway through you're like, oh fuck, I can't say this right. Akira Toriyama. That's what I said. No, it's not what you said, Your Honor. Um, the third time I just help design Mario and was, I think it was some of the Mario design but also the wings on the hat is based off of a Toriyama character uh, and they 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 pulled it from that so I think that's cool wild that. um Jake we're gonna toss it over to Jake uh, folks we know you've been mm -hmm. watching those videos that have definitely been coming out about our wishlist spotlights so Jake's gonna hit you up with one of those right now tossing it over to Jake my man go for it yeah, at the risk of uh, re-mentioning something that we might have mentioned here before, a game called Death Grip from Reclaim Interactive, which is uh, not a game about the band Death Grips. Oh, it is, God, um, if it was, though, a fuck, rhythm that'd game, be a great Death game. Grips rhythm game. No, it's, uh, it's a pod racing game. It's just straight up <laughs> pod racing game. It's a legally distinct pod racing game, and uh, it looks pretty great. Thank you, Jake. I'm sorry. Will, have you never heard Death Grips? I have no I, I know don't, nothing don't about music. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. I feel like we need to do a stream where we just lock you in a room and make you listen to Death Grips. It's like, uh, what was, what's the no love This is an extra web? life concept. It's, you know, fuck, it's, it's good, but it's fucking harsh and wild. And it's, it's very, it's, it's very jarring the first time you listen to it. I think I, I don't know. I, I, someone I, I respect uh posted a thing on twitter where they're like hey this person released a new song and i was like oh i like music they've told me about so i listened to it and it was like heavy metal screaming and i was very scared and i don't i don't know if i can trust people isn't anymore. that it's it's not that but it's it's more in a way it's it's, it's really indescribable it's amazing is it's like what York? it is but, I will say the first song on No Love Deep Web has that like 60 second voice clip from one of Charles Manson's interviews. And it's one of the hardest fucking openers to a song ever. It's incredible. I love it so much. Death Grip Singular uh, Pod Racing. Please go look at it, it looks and really cool. it. Because I need this it. game right now. Yeah. And I need it. Now. now, how much do you think a pod racer? Me. Oh, there's a demo. There oh, is a Lord. demo. Holy shit! Oh, good lord! I'm yeah, gonna Steam have to is installed. That. Open Steam. Yeah, fuck the podcast. Um, how much? This looks quick, really great. Quick question. Quick question. Mm -hmm. I am looking at a Star Wars Pod Racer Deluxe Arcade Cabinet on eBay. How much do you guys think it is? Oh, Fifteen thousand dollars. I would. I'm not gonna say five figures, but I'm gonna say high four figures. Seven or eight thousand. It's seven thousand dollars. You could probably get Damn. it cheaper if you looked around locally. I what can't. If we all split that. that. We should. <laughs> we should just build one. Honestly, I can. You know, I we could. We should just build one. I can. Why don't the check came in? I could. I could buy it. <laughs> um. I... We could build one. If we build it, we will come. Uh, Lucas, folks. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, Campfire Night and Halucha. Thank you for being here. Um, oh, I gotta hit the music, don't I? Um, I am your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week was the lovely Jake Terrio and the beautiful lovely. and handsome Will Crosby. And uh, Ian was here as well. Folks, if you want to see us more, you can come back here around 3 p.m. on good old Saturday. And that's this Saturday. We're going to be playing some Battlefront classic uh i have it on the xbox and switch so i'll play it on one of those uh probably the xbox and uh it'll be a fun time uh then we'll be back uh tuesday possibly with more fired emblem we might take a hiatus uh because jason's doing something and i think and kyle's away so uh we might do something else uh and then uh thursday next thursday's local chat so uh look forward to that um jake put out a new play this today Go check that out over on your YouTube channel, subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you to that YouTube channel if you click on the link tree that it first brought you to uh, to go see that. 
Oh shit, the music. Bye everyone. <laughs> Forgot. Bye.